My girls are making short work of this old cutout comb. When they're done with it, it goes in there. Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. Working up a thirst, collecting some bees at a truck stop. Wanted to show you my, my flex fuel B by four. <laughs> Just hanging on everything. Occasionally I like to show you a part of the beekeeping industry that you don't get to see anywhere else. And that is when large scale bee transportation goes sideways. I'm at a truck stop picking up about 40 pounds of bees. My dad's down here vacuuming bees. Got a box here with some old brood comb. This is one of three. I'm about done vacuuming that one. That was just the tip of the iceberg. My dad's down there vacuuming that because he can't stand on uneven ground. But here's the big cluster. And there was another big one there. I've about got it all in the vac. We got these little battery powered B vacs. Picking them up. Be out here till dark probably. Now when things like this go down, they have to call in someone with a certain skill set. In this case, that someone was me. Actually, it wasn't, it was my dad, but he couldn't handle it by himself. So in this case, that someone was me. Now I know some of you are thinking, I've called swarms before. That's nothing. <laughs> this whole job ended up taking about six hours, finishing after dark, probably 60 pounds of bees in total. Seven or eight different large clusters. Uh, two of them found by people walking their dogs over on the ditch. And you know, they holler at us, hey, Mr. B, man, there's another one. And we, <laughs> I'm like, geez, will it ever end? Now what you just saw is a result of a bee transport truck stopping for fuel. How this happens is that as large scale commercial beekeepers fulfill pollination contracts, they have to move their, their bees. They're moved on flatbed semi trailers, about 450 boxes at a time. And of course, as they cross the country, they have to stop for fuel. Well, the amount of bees that they lose at a truck stop, and they always lose some, it's not normally this much, but it's dependent on a lot of factors. It depends on outside temperature. It depends on how long since their last stop, how heavily populated the boxes are, how many boxes are on the truck, how long the driver stopped, and so on and so on. On this one, we picked up two trips. It was a trip uh, a day or two prior to this, and then this one. This one took about six hours. We picked up about 60 pounds of bees both times, and it's a difficult job. It's not It's not like running out and snagging a swarm out of a tree. You got truck drivers back and forth through your work area. You got people trying to walk dogs, truck drivers trying to work dogs, or people from the gas station stop for fuel because it's on a main thoroughfare. Uh, people want air in their tires, so everybody's up in your workspace. You're having to warn them away. You know, there's bees all over the place. Get out of here, and they, they don't realize what you're doing. They don't see the bees flying until you point them out and then they, oh God, we're surrounded and they take off. Um, this happens several times a year that we have to deal with this. Like I say, it's not usually this bad, but it is what it is. Somebody's got to take care of the cleanup and we just happen to be one of those companies that do. And that's all I got for this one, so let's go see what else we can get into. I hope I don't have to move these things. Got another issue with people putting boxes on state property. I think I might know who these belong to and I hope I can find out because let me, let me show you. Is that about 20 boxes or so there? Those last three I picked up for the city. Nobody ever claimed them. Of course, no pay there, so I ended up giving them to a friend of mine. These here definitely belong to somebody. 
And I don't want, this is a lot of bees. It's a lot of bees for somebody to lose. I, I think they would probably be coming looking for them though. <laughs> They're all good looking colonies. Looks like they're all healthy, but they've been sitting here for a minute. And uh, code enforcement, animal control, wants them gone. I'm fixing to make a couple phone calls, see if I can't figure out who they are, because I do not want to move them. Good news, I'm off the hook. I figured out who they belong to. He had a bear and go out on a trailer and just had to unload them here, but they've been sitting here for about three weeks. So. He said, uh, yeah, I'll get out there and move them. Tragedy averted. And I'm off to do something else. Morning, y'all. <clears throat> Me and Mr. Datlow is fixing to dig in his garage utility room. He's got a nice size hive in his wall, it looks like. How long have been in there? Couldn't, in have there? Been, couldn't have been six months. Six months. About to mark the wall and get the cutting in. And you said you wanted all the honey and all the bees, right? You want, no, you can have it. <laughs> I want it all out of here. <laughs> I was going to set it in my backyard for you. So we're going to get busy marking and cutting. The water can wear out. Let me tell you, 72, I'm smoking that Okay, we're going to be working up in the top corner of this utility room. About to start marking this corner. I got my. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Got my T-square, I wanna get a straight cut because I'm gonna try to put this same drywall back if they hadn't eat the back off of it, made it weak. Okay, I got three cuts made. I gotta cut one more across the ceiling. Yeah. We're masking off. Got the floor covered. This is an unfinished utility room, but still don't wanna make a mess. So we're covering everything up real good. And I was, I did a couple plunge cuts looking for the stud. The stud's right here, I marked it right here, but I marked it on that nail. I guess they caught the edge of the stud with the nail, but had to move over a little bit. And we got a few bees joining us out here. Where'd they go? They must've went outside. I know y'all want to see what I see because well, <laughs> I'm fixing to show on video what we got. There's wires. You see that honey running down that wire? And then right here, combs all tangled up in the electrical. Let me set this back down and I'll pull it. I'm about ready to give it to you. Part of it's trying to fall now. Wow. Oh. Good grief. What do you need? Um, that little bag right there probably would do for now. Can y'all see that honey running down? This is the first thing that fell out. It's just heavily weighted with pollen and honey. Okay, honey bee, you can get off of them anytime you want. I feel like my legs. You want to taste it? Stick your finger in there right there. Just pick your open spot. Just run it up. Now look, Bubba. Just lean it on. Pump her off. Pump her off. That's sweet. Let's take a quick once over for the queen before we start vacuuming. Get another taste of this. I think we're in good shape. Yeah. 
shape because I can stuff this. It's just between those, right? That's what so. it looks like. I think so. Once I get up here, I'll know for sure. But I can stuff all of that with that blue filter material. Yeah, I can see daylight through part of it. How do you spot the corner? You got a, about twice as long of an abdomen. Yeah. And she's usually a little bit of a different color. Now this honey here came off of a different comb section that we tasted. That might be a little bit different flavor. Up. It's good. You sure you don't want it? <laughs> no, you can have it. This is where you got to be careful when you're cutting into service walls. Yeah. Uh -huh. The panels over here, which is where you would expect the wire to be. Yeah. But right here. I cut just the depth of the rock because if you start plunge cutting, if I'd come across here, that was almost to the back of the sheetrock. Could have been a problem. She doing all right? Yeah. It really works for over, you know, not been in it before. Mr. Homeowner was just asking me what I thought of the age of this colony. He hadn't noticed them before this past spring. Asked me what I thought about how old they were, because he thought it was big, you know. Of course, he ain't never seen one before, so. My uh, answer to him was had to do with the color of the combs. Do you see this dark brood right here? We got bees. Uh, there was some somewhere up here emerging, and there's a bunch more up here in this darker comb emerging. But this right here has had at least one brood cycle through it. This up here, uh, prior to this cap stuff, which is already starting to emerge. This up here has had a couple brood cycles through it. And at 21 days per cycle, I'd say maybe three cycles through this top section. I'd say maybe they've been here two and a half, three months. Had they had to have time to build down that far and start laying that up. But it's also, I believe, swarmed at some point because there's not really a heck of a lot of bees in it. Just gonna cut this down and flip it over and. Look for the queen. Cut another little piece of brood section, see if she ain't hiding on the back of it. Yeah. Let's try to be real gentle with it. I don't know whether you know them or not. The one that built this house, and it was one, two, three, four houses he built out here, Wayne Cook. Uh, I don't know him. Well, the whole family did that. Built houses or the did, wife, did beekeeping? The son, daughter. They did what? Beekeeping or houses? Built these houses. Oh, okay. You know, it, it's just, <laughs> the whole family got into it. Good grief. She loved to learn a few things from me that I didn't know as well. <laughs> and I think a bee sting. Ah. If you're gentle around them, yeah. usually they're okay. There are times where they'll take it out on you, but most of the time... Well, if I get bit, I get bit. Most of the time, if you're gentle with them, they'll... Yeah. 
pretty well leave you alone. Well, that one, like I said, you know, when I was washing and drying clothes, mm -hmm. he landed on me, I think, maybe twice, he or she or whatever. There was a female. He, uh, landed on me about twice, but nothing ever happened. Yeah. I just kept doing my little thing, didn't jerk or nothing. Or right. Try to, I just let it go, you know. That's and where most most people get stung flailing around trying to swat the bee off of them and they accidentally mash them or something. No, I'm not going really. to. A lot of people do not, I guess, do not realize that it's not just fertilizer and chemicals that make things happen. That's right. These little critters that, uh, uh, anyway, it wasn't a king or a coral. It was another, probably old chicken. I think it was a chicken. But anyway, she had the rake in her hand and she, hey, come on, come on, come on, trying to pick it up with the rake and go throw it over, over to the ditch. And it, called up like that. <laughs> she oh, said, go out there and look at that snake. I went out there, no head. <laughs> no head. And I looked, and I went back inside. You shot me, didn't you? Yeah. She said, I went and loaded up that little 410, went back out there. I said, how far away from him? She said, about three feet. I never found the head of that snake. <laughs> she got it. And she just did. left it out there. Well, at least she, she's a good shot. Oh, she hunted. We hunted together for years before yeah. we got there. Anyway, she, that Doberman we had at the time, it was a male. He worked on commands, and we had a particular word that was in a foreign language that we used for mm. him to watch. And he knew not to let whatever it was out of sight. And that's when she came inside and got my little 410 loaded up boat. <laughs> and uh, she cleaned that one up. <laughs> yeah. Done. End of snake. Yeah. I mean, she's... If she can see it, okay. But if uh, I do what I did that one time with that black person coming to the house with it, wrapped around my arm, head to head, like it, look what I got. I'm surprised. Needless she, to say, the snake fared better than I did. I was going to say, I'm surprised she didn't finish you off. Oh, well. It wasn't no Sunday school words, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> but uh, I just lay. It didn't look like that many flying in there at the time. I know they got an S. I know they've got that yeah. to take care of. Yeah, a bunch of them. But it's just a bunch of them that I saw. Alright, I got the majority of the bees out. But we got construction from the 70s, is that when this was built? Yeah, around 76. This is prior to the invention of firecock, so there's holes up there that the bees are running. And I haven't seen the queen yet. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, leave that comb. I'm going to leave that group of bees right there. Yeah. I'm going to go get me something to eat and I'm going to come back. Okay. Then I'm going to close that up. I'm going to leave the scratch door open. Just went and had some chicken. Let these girls settle down see what they're going to do. Back in here. They're about right where they were when I left them. I thought there was a bunch of them running up in that hole. Running up in those holes going up in the attic. I'm going to look through for the queen one more time and I'm going to start backing. I know there's a queen in here somewhere because she's still laying. It's a small chance I could have backed her already, but she may be up in that corner right there. And she could be running. There are bees coming in and out of those holes going to the attic. This is where they're coming in, back of the power box. <laughs> I gotta pack all that so it doesn't happen again. I smoked in the gap between the framing and the sheetrock. That's roof decking I'm hitting right there. Smoked up in here, ran a few out, but there wasn't but a handful in there. So what you see is what came out basically, and then the rest of these just run around with no direction. I'm half thinking I probably vacuumed her. Can't see her anywhere. I've done been all over the floor. 
can't find her on the floor. That's the only other place that I really can't see too well that she could possibly be. I'm about to vacuum them. And if I get her, I get her. Not enough left to do anything for sure. Can't build back. I'll pack this space back with insulation. Pack that so they can't get in. And hang sheetrock back, we'll be done. This attic's drafting pretty well. And you want to make sure if you do this, let them know. If they see a bunch of smoke in the house, let you know because you don't want to stink the house up, make it smell like a campfire. And sometimes you blow a bunch of smoke up in something like that, it'll come out in the house. That ain't no fun. I smoked up in an apartment one time. <laughs> Nobody was home. We were smoking in a soffit. And the time we realized that the whole entire apartment looked like it was on fire in, inside a downstairs unit. I'm careful about that now. I forgot to film the end of the cutout for you. I got them all out. I spent about another hour rounding up strays and stragglers and, and uh, we're still about two hours from dark so we got foragers still coming back. The conduit that was coming from the panel through the brick veneer got packed from the backside with blue AC filter material just packed it in there real tight so the bees couldn't get around uh, because if they could get in at least between the brick and the soundboard they could go anywhere so the vo the opening in the brick veneer had to be closed off and then I packed that uh, stud space with insulation hung the sheetrock back and bed coated it I uh, didn't finish it but I did bed coat it for them and uh, stayed around and vacked up bees coming in late that was it I'm done on the way home gotta get cleaned up go relax for tomorrow